The responders faction is returning to Appalachia in flesh. Besides dozens of volunteers, we are also getting a new location, a new main mission and new daily quests. Let's dive in. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Now, Bethesda just started a new public test on PC for the upcoming expeditions. I know there were some technical issues and they took it down shortly after, but it should return tonight, so let's see how it goes. Now, the Expeditions The Pit DLC is scheduled only for Fall 2022 and a decent part of the new content is dedicated to the responders, which are turning the White Spring Resort into their base of operations. The upper levels got completely reworked. As you can see, it looks like a brand new place now. Anyway, the Mission Responders Reborn brings a lot of lore and information about the return of this faction, as well as their purpose and ongoing missions, which includes aiding the pit. Now, you may be wondering, why would you want to do this mission? Well, it's a gem of lore to start with, but it also introduces and gives you access to expeditions, so it's like a two-in-one sort of deal. There are also new daily missions which are required to fuel up the vertibird and start your own expeditions. Well then, let's check how it's all done and get into the mission guide. Alright, to start the Responders Reborn mission, you need to head to the Responders base, which will be set at the White Spring Resort, as I mentioned, which is now called the White Spring Refuge. In fact, there are now two options during fast travel. You can directly choose to spawn outside as per usual or inside the refuge itself. It's a pretty handy option to have. Head inside to automatically start a new mission, then move past his new receptionist, Robot. He has a few things to say, by the way, but let's keep the lore spoilers. Move a bit forward to talk to Orlando, the person in charge in the area, and get ready for a swarm of lore. I'm serious, this NPC's purpose is to ensure you get the TLDR of what's going on here regarding the responder's return and the pit as well. I'm only showing you the player dialogue options to avoid major spoilers, but as you can probably imagine from the footage, Orlando is that guy you must talk to if you love story and lore stuff. Anyway, to progress the mission, make sure to select all the first dialogue options until the next objectives show up. And yes, I know it looks scary at first, one mission suddenly multiplies into four missions, but that's because to complete the main mission, you need to first complete three daily missions. Does the four item list in total. Don't worry though, they are all pretty simple and quick to do. Well, for the most part, I must say. The order you complete the dailies do not matter, by the way. I started from right to left, so first I talked to Sophie to do her mutual aid daily. She seems to be responsible for managing raw resources for the responders. Now, in order to complete this daily mission, you need to deliver 50 units of a required material she requests. In my first attempt, she requested 50 wood. Then later on the second request, she asked me for 50 steel. So I can imagine the list of potential requests is long, judging on how many materials we have in 76. Anyway, for my main mission, I went for wood. You can simply retrieve the requested material from your stash if you have it, or get it from the world. It's pretty simple. Don't forget to equip the woodchunker perk under luck to gather extra wood if you are going to play lumberjack man. Remember to play efficiently at all times. Then head to your favorite wood depot. Mine is right here at the silver and Sons logging camp, you can gather hundreds of wood at once. I didn't even loot the entire place and ended up with 300 wood in a matter of seconds. Just watch out for the creatures there and that's it. Now go back to Sylvie, tell her you have what she requested and complete your daily mission. Don't expect any fancy rewards though. After all, the new responder daily purpose is to enable a way to obtain the ultra side battery cells or ultra cell charge. Some dailies give 25 and others 50, but it's always two dailies with 25 and one with 50 per day. Yep, one in three responder dailies will spawn per day according to Bethesda. Also, the limit for ultra cell charge is only 100, which means you can't really farm it over time without consuming it first. 
Lastly, you can check how much ultra cell charge you have at any point by going to our Pip Boy and then accessing the collectible tab as shown here. So it's very simple. Moving forward, I want to talk to Esme to solve recipe for success, a very tricky one to tackle, I might add. It's a small cooking challenge. After receiving instructions from Esme, you need to put on the chef's outfit on the nearby counter. Then it's time to steer the stew using the ladle. Move to the left if the NPC blocks your interaction. And after this, it's it's time to head to the storage rooms. The first one is right behind the kitchen and it's where you usually find all or most ingredients, right on the shelves, counters and furniture as shown in the footage. They can spawn anywhere so make sure to check it truly. Now here's the tricky part, there's a second storage room towards the left side which I totally missed the first time, thus failing my cooking challenge. But that's alright because I got to learn something with it. Actually it's better if you fail, to be honest, it saves you a lot of time because it doesn't seem to matter. My first attempt was a misery. I couldn't even retrieve the three ingredients. I know it's sad. So Asm gave me a burnt stew to be delivered. Yeah, it's the wasteland. Food is scarce, so you gotta eat what you get, right? I decided to give this lovely stew with a taste of coal to the raider's representative and to my surprise, he took it. I mean, he first complained about it. He even asked me if I think they eat garbage at the crater. Well, yeah, maybe I do. <laughs> but the point here is, you get the rewards either way. So, burnt or not, the result seems to be the same. Moreover, there seems to be more steps into this daily mission if you follow the objectives. After grabbing the three ingredients from the shelves in the storage rooms, you need to prep them, like chopping the meat, washing the tattoos, and cutting the carrots. Then you need to add salt and pepper to finalize the stew, just to let you know. Also, all the objective marks here are triggered by proximity, so if you are not close enough to them, the marks will not show, which creates this challenge into some sorting of guessing or luck game because you have to find them, there's no indicator to help you here. Anyway, let's keep moving. After the cooking session, I went far left to talk to Bossy Rucker and then proceeded to gather medical information as part of the Code Blue daily mission. This one is super easy. Just head to Braxton's quality medical supplies in the mire and access the terminal there. Then open the first entry called Good Luck and you will know where to look next. Get the surgical equipment plans from the nearby doctor's bag and that's it. Return to the White Spring Refuge and deliver the plans to the responder's medic, close to the bar. For whatever reason, this one gave me 50 ultra side cells, perhaps because it forces players to adventure far into the dangers of the mire, while the others are a bit more conservative. I mean, you need to gather resources, you might have them already. And the other one was a cooking challenge, which happens all there, you don't have to go anywhere else. Well, once you complete the three daily responder missions, it's time to talk to Mr. Skippy. He's the robotics engineer, sort of, located in front of the refuge entrance at the far back. You will soon learn he is actually from the pit and he's looking for fighters to help push back the fanatics. There's more lore here, of course, plenty of stuff to learn, but let's skip all the major spoilers as per usual. After you are done talking to him, you need to access the roof to speak to Lennox, but I will save you some time here. I mean, you can always go outside and try to fly to the roof using your jetpack if you have one, but it's not necessary to do that. From Skippy's position, you can just head to the right side, then straight past these closed rooms until you find the elevator's door. That is the way. It will lead you straight to the roof, where you can find Lennox near the Vertibert, our full-time pilot. She also has a bit of lore to reveal, but not much. Also, she was a bit hard to access on my end. I suspect when someone else is talking to her already, you must wait until she is available to talk to you. Anyway, once you conclude the talking by telling her she is your ride to the pit, the system will automatically complete the responder's reborn mission and open this introductory interface with some basics about expeditions, such as vertibirds, ultra cells, and launching your own expedition. Now, this interface will disguise the mission rewards, you don't get much though, but there is a new responder's Rucker's outfit which looks like this according to the data miner Serite. So that's a bonus since the mission is mostly lore oriented and introduces you to new features like expeditions of course. 
It looks pretty nice actually, I should probably craft it the next time PTS goes live. Moving forward and talking about expeditions, how do you even start one? Yeah, I thought this vertibird here was the key to get there, kinda like what Bethesda did with Fallout 4, Far Harbor's DLC and the interactive button inside the boat, but nope, not really. This vertibird here is only for display, at least right now. I even checked the inside and I could not interact with anything. Maybe in the future that will be a thing, but not now. It seems like the only way to access expeditions is through the map via the giant new button at the top. Once you click it, a new interface will pop up with some useful information, such as the available responders dailies and the amount of ultra cells they give. You can also check how much ultra side battery cells you currently have. This menu is also the place you want to go if you want to start your own expedition or resume one if you have already started and paused it. It's a pretty condensed but handy menu, I would say. Lastly, I have one last thing to mention here. After completing the responders reborn, the three dailies and one expedition, I noticed some new missions inside the refuge, one called a refugee's guide and another misc mission about a thirsty refugee. Sadly, I couldn't test them since the servers went down shortly after, but there seems to be a bit more into the responders requests and new content. That's it for the responders missions, as for the pit and expeditions altogether, that's definitely material for another video. There's a lot to cover there, so stay tuned. The responders are coming back to Appalachia in mass and they are about to become one of the major factions in 76, but they are only arriving this fall for the official servers. Regardless, I think Bethesda could explore their lore and purpose a little bit more. I feel like one small main mission, which integrates a few minor daily missions, are nowhere close to enough. The responders are a major meaningful faction and they deserve a little bit more devotion, don't you think? Even in terms of logic, I mean, we are getting introduced to a new settlement in another region so far away, yet we hardly have a chance to help our own people. It's like nobody in Appalachia is in dire need of help anymore. Also, these dailies will become really tedious over time, Perhaps three dailies to start one expedition are a bit too ambitious. I know they are relatively quick to do, but still about five minutes each equals 15 minutes every day to get ultra cells. I'm not sure players will enjoy such repeating meaningless missions, but A, there's still hope things will change and improve until this fall. Lastly, the White Spring Refuge is a major rework of the resort. They really worked hard to make it look like a proper responder settlement, but there's still one thing I don't understand. Why the White Spring exactly? Why not the Morgantown Airport, for example? It would make more sense. There's plenty of space for vertiboards there, and it used to be a responder's outpost before. I really think Bethesda just wanted to give a new purpose to this central location, and they saw a good opportunity here, so they went with it. I don't think it's a terrible idea, don't get me wrong, I just think it doesn't make much sense, especially with Modus a few meters away. Yeah, the more you think about it, the more strange it starts to look, I think. Anyway, that's everything for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you excited about the responders' comeback? Do you feel like the missions are a bit underwhelming or are they good enough for you? Well, it's time for me to go. I am Arte Branco. Thank you so much for watching and a special thanks to all my supporters. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet to help the channel. And that's it. I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.